number six mobile app. Download it today. We are tracking the last of the heavy rain and storms on Live Viper 6, but believe it or not, we actually still have a lot more to come later on this evening and tomorrow, not rain-wise, but I'll have more details on that coming up. Now on Good Morning Augusta, a proposal to make cuts to South Carolina state record-breaking gas prices. When is the best time to fill up your tank? Details as your number one source for local weekend morning news starts right now. Live from Television Park, this is Good Morning Augusta on WJBF News Channel 6. Good morning, sunshine. Thank you for joining us. It's great to see you. I am Sean Cabbage Stock. Today is a Viper 6 alert day. Let's head over to Meteorons with Jenna Petracci. Jenna, most of the rain already gone out of the metro, but we have to deal with those chilly temperatures, right? Definitely spot on, Sean. It's going to cool down big time later, but in the meantime, still dealing with a few areas of heavy rain and storms. Here's a look at Live Viper 6. Notice that line moving now towards the east, just affecting our far southeastern counties, leaving Augusta and Aiken clear all the way to the north as well, just dealing with those clouds. Here's a look at that stretch of heavy rain all the way from around the border of Barnwell and Bamberg County. So if you're in Bamberg, know that some heavy rain is headed towards your way. Looking further south into Allendale County, another batch of rain headed towards downtown. Sylvania, that rain just passed you. You're now clear. And that's about it. All of this will continue to move out of here pretty quickly. But as I mentioned earlier, we still have a lot going on tonight. Wind advisory in effect until 7 p.m. So we are keeping that Viper 6 alert day. Expect gusts up to around 45 miles per hour. Right now you can see winds coming in from the north that just transitioned as that front moved through. 19 miles per hour sustained in Augusta, 21 in Aiken. As we look at those wind gusts, 25 miles per hour now in Augusta, 30 mile per hour gusts in Aiken. So the winds are definitely no joke right now. Even if you're done with the rain, expect those very gusty conditions if you're headed out the door. As I mentioned, that front is now moving past the Augusta area, leaving that change in the wind directions and also clearing skies. Jiffy Loop Skyview Network Cam at Washington Road still showing the cloudy conditions, but the rain has stopped. So be careful out there. We will have some puddling on the roadways. Also, very interesting to look at right now. The temperature map showing a huge different difference. We're seeing mid 40s over in Crawfordville and Sparta, upper 60s in our southeastern countries or counties. That is. So of course that cold front is coming through, bringing that much colder air in from the north. So big change today. Day planner actually showing decreasing temperatures rather than rising. So we actually reached our high already for the day. And as expected tonight, we do have a freeze warning. 8, 8 p.m. to 11 a.m. tomorrow, expect temperatures to drop into the 20s. I'll have more details on exactly what you can expect the rest of this evening and tomorrow. But for now, back to you, Sean. All right, Jenna, thank you. These low temperatures this weekend could really impact the peach crops. Right now, peach trees are in various stages of bloom. Matt Forrest is the co-owner of Dixie Bell Orchards in Johnston. He says that each flower on a branch becomes a peach. Ones in full bloom are likely to die during the freeze, but the buds still have a chance to survive and become peaches. Uh, typically, 28, 29 degrees, you have a, a chance to make a, a good crop with that. If it gets below that, uh, we could be in, in some trouble there. Uh, the trees, they bloom, way more blooms than you need to make a crop. But if we get 10 to 20 percent of the blooms to live, yeah, we can still make a crop. Pretty cool. Dixie Bell grows more than 30 variety of peaches. Qualifying for elections in Augusta and the And a treatment has been authorized by the FDA for emergency use. Coming up, it's a Viper 6 alert day. Jenna's tracking rain and windy conditions. She have your hour by hour forecast coming up next. Come on in to Davis Appliance and Furniture, where you can find the best deals in town. It's tax 
Mornings at WJBF Live Viper 6 Alert. Good Saturday morning. We had that alert day earlier for the strong storms. Notice now those are starting to end as they move towards the east. Let's take a closer look as uh, we see these areas of heavy rain still moving through our eastern counties. This just passed through downtown Barnwell and Allendale. So heavy rain now moving just out of our viewing area. So that's great news. If you're anywhere north of Allendale or Barnwell, you would no longer have to worry about the rain. However, Jiffy Lube Skyview Network Cam outside here at Television Park still showing very, very overcast skies. Of course, those roads are going to be very wet from all the rain that we had overnight. So still be very careful when driving. 57 degrees as the temperature in Augusta with a 19 mile per hour wind. Looking at our temperature map, this is very interesting. We're seeing mid 40s in our northwestern counties, 44 in Crawfordville, 45 over in Washington. Feeling like winter over here, feeling like springtime further towards the southeast, upper 60s over in Allendale, Bamberg, and Sylvania. Just a little bit ago, we were still at that 70 degree mark in between temperatures in the central half of our area, mostly in those mid 50s. Wind direction map also very interesting. We have a northerly wind behind the cold front, southerly wind still ahead of that front. So you can clearly tell where that front is, and that's just on the outskirts of our viewing area. So you can see that as we go along to our satellite and radar, there's that cold front and all the rain is now going ahead of that front with clearing conditions behind it. Also all that snow that we saw earlier over in parts of Alabama and Western Georgia is also moving up towards the north. So improving conditions for sure in Georgia and parts of South Carolina. Overall for our future cast at 8 a.m. we can see that not dealing with any more rain and those skies will actually start to clear around the afternoon just very gusty conditions still coming in from the northwest so that's why we still have that viper six alert day for the rest of today due to gusty winds so even though there won't be any rain or storms associated with it we'll still see gusts up to around 45 miles per hour upper 30s showing at 12 p.m so on this map, we're only seeing most of those upper 30s, but definitely possible. We could have a gust up to 45. As we go into the late afternoon and early evening, conditions start to improve, seeing more so in the 20s range. But overall, that wind advisory is in effect until 7 p.m. this evening for all of our counties and also um, much of Georgia and South Carolina. Immediately when that ends, we transition to a freeze warning from 8 p.m. to 11 a.m. tomorrow. So another Viper 6 alert day for your Sunday due to very cold conditions. A freeze is likely with temperatures dropping between 20 to 25 degrees. Definitely the coldest we've been in a while. So remember those four Ps, just warm tonight, keep the heat on. Also, bring your plants inside now. Definitely leave, don't leave any pets outside either overnight. Now tomorrow, also remember that daylight saving time begins. That means that we lose an hour of sleep, but on the bright side, we have a lot more daylight. That sunset will be at 7.35 p.m. Overall for your day planner today, starting out cloudly, cloudy with skies uh, clearing as we go later on. Also notice the inverse temperature trend here, starting out in those mid 50s, but we'll be dropping into the 40s later on. So we actually already reached our high for the day so this is backwards, 64 earlier this morning, but by this afternoon, 49 will be our high, you could say. And for tomorrow, much colder, of course, 22 in the morning in Augusta, only making it to 56 later on. Temperatures will warm up, though. Notice we're going back into the 70s by Tuesday and 80 degrees by Friday. Our lows tonight, as I mentioned, very cold in those 20s. And here's a look at your 10-day forecast. Viper 6 alert day tomorrow due to the freeze and some more rain we're tracking next week along with warmer temperatures. Back to you, Sean. All right, Jenna, thank you. Coming up in less than three minutes, do you sleep around someone who snores? Well, the survey is sharing where the worst snores in the United States live. We'll share that with you next. Time to take a look at what's trending. A Florida trooper says that she was just doing what she had to do when she drove her patrol car into a speeding car that was headed straight into a 5 and 10K marathon. It happened Sunday morning when a driver broke through the barricade for the race. Trooper Tony Shook saw that the car wasn't stopping, so she positioned her Chevy Tahoe across the road. It was nearly hit head on. The driver is facing DUI charges. She says she's been on the job for about 26 years, but 
never had to do anything like this before. Mm, not good, Sean. Not good at all. <laughs> Definitely not. Well, do you sleep around someone who snores? Well, a survey is sharing where the worst snores in the United States live. A study of 2,000 adults find that 53% of residents in New York, Washington, D.C., Connecticut, and surrounding states keep their partners and housemates awake with their nocturnal noise more than any other region. While it can sometimes be seen as something to laugh about, 46% of adults who snore or live with a snorer in the Northeast are so tired that it has affected their day-to-day -day lives. I definitely believe that because I'm from the Northeast and uh, my dad is the worst snorer ever. So Yeah, I wish, I wish we had the information for Georgia and South Carolina, but I couldn't find it, Jenna. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I wonder if we're like below average snorers or what. <laughs> But at least we're not as bad as the Northeast. Is. Exactly. Yeah. Today is National Girl Scout Day. Girl Scouting in the U.S. began on this day, 2012. I'm sorry, 1912, when Juliet Gordon Lowe organized the first Girl Scout troop meeting, and that troop meeting was held in Savannah, Georgia, where 18 girls were present. For these girls, Juliet Gordon Lowe organized enrichment programs, service projects, and outdoor activities and adventures. Since the time of the first meeting, Girl Scouts have grown to more than 3.7 million members. I used to be one of them when I was a kid. Ah, girl power. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Was a fun time. I was a Boy Scout, not a Girl Scout, though. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Well, coming up on Good Morning Augusta, we'll have more on the crisis in Ukraine and why President Biden 